Hey everybody, I want to give you a sample for how to put together your axe level cross explanation animation. Um, I'm going to work with cross C. You're expected to work with A, B, or D um, as you work up your explanations. So here we go. So what I'm going to present, and if you take a look at the assignment, this tells you what you should be doing. For cross C, I'm going to show you photos of both parents. You should have taken pictures of your parents. Um, if you haven't, hopefully we can get some folks posting those into the chat so we can access those. Um, if not, um, let me know and I will get you the pictures that you need. Um, so photos of both parents. Um, you're also going to see representative photos of the offspring. You might want to take these in class over the next couple of days if you don't have them already. Um, a table describing the phenotypic ratios, so giving you an idea of which phenotypes were seen and why. An explanation of the possible crosses with regards to melanin, and you're expected to do that as well. And then finally, an explanation, and I chose GFP. You could choose iridophores, leucism, something else, um, copper if you want. But I chose GFP because I think it's kind of interesting in this case. Okay, so here's our first parent. This was parent number one. This parent is a leucistic male. Um, since it shows the leucistic characteristic, that means it's homozygous recessive for this characteristic because leucism is recessive. Um, this axe level also doesn't glow. Um, that means it's homozygous recessive for GFP as well because if it had either copies of the large dominant characteristic there, it would be glowing. But this parent can't do either. Um, our other parent was a GFP leucistic. So similarly, homozygous recessive for leucism. Um, and in this case though, heterozygous or homozygous dominant for GFP because it is showing that GFP characteristic. And as we go through it, we'll explain um, what's going on with those. Our offspring, we saw a good bit of variety with this cross. Um, we actually saw four different phenotypes in our offspring. They're not all pictured here, but this represents them. It's got every one pictured at least once. Um, so if you're looking, um, we did see some straight leucistics. So these ones uh, showed the same characteristic as parent number one. Uh, we saw a good number of those. About 30% of all of our axolotls had this characteristic. Um, we also saw some GFP leucistics. Um, 30 to 40% saw this one as well. These ones showed the same characteristics as parent number two. But somewhat surprisingly, we also saw some axolotls that were albino. About 16% of our axolotls were true albinos without the GFP characteristic, and about 15% or so were showing um, albinism, but also showing the GFP characteristic. So this is what we saw for our offspring, and I want to try and explain why we were seeing it. Remember, of course, leucism can make melanin. They have that black in their eyes, but the albinos cannot. So we're seeing a difference there between the offspring and the parent. As far as GFP goes, about half of our offspring could make GFP and half could. Okay, so let's start by explaining melanin. So remember, melanin is the ability to make black coloring. Leucistic axolotls can make melanin. It's just, res it's just restricted to their eyes. So parent number one can make melanin. It shows up in his eyes. Parent two can also make melanin. It shows up in her eyes. So both parents are capable of making melanin. So since they can make melanin and melanin production is dominant, they both have this dominant allele. What we don't know is if they have one copy or two. They may be homozygous dominant or big M, big M, or heterozygous. You can't tell by looking at them um, which of these two that they have. But we know both parents can do this. So our question is, what cross did we do? What combination for these parents did we actually do? Well, if we look at our possible crosses, we know it's not possible crosses one, four, and five, because each of those crosses have one parent that can't make melanin, or in the case of cross five, two parents that can't make melanin. Both of our parents could, so we know it's not one of these crosses. Neither of our parents are homozygous recessive for melanin production. So it has to be either cross two, where it's a heterozygote and a homozygote dominant, cross three, where it's two homozygote dominants, or cross six, where one is heterozygous and so is the other. We don't know which it is by looking at them, but if we take a look at the offspring, this is hopefully going to help us out. And remember, for leucism, we saw some offspring that didn't make melanin. It was a small fraction, but it was some. So let's go through these crosses. So the first cross, cross number one, has a heterozygote and a homozygous dominant. When we cross these, again, we just bring in the alleles for each parent, and as we go through and cross them, we find that all of the offspring produce melanin. About 50% of them would be homozygous dominant, or two big M's. About 50% percent 
were heterozygous, or little m and a big M, but 100% of them show melanin. They all make melanin. Since our cross had some axolotls that don't make melanin, we can pretty much rule out this cross. We know we didn't have this because some of our offspring didn't fit from this, this scenario. So it wasn't possible cross two. Well, let's move on. Possible cross three, pretty obvious here. Possible cross three has 100% of the offspring being homozygous dominant. And again, all would be able to show melanin. Since they can all show melanin and some of ours didn't, we're pretty sure it wasn't possible cross three either because this one had nothing but melanin producing offspring. Hopefully cross six works for us, so let's take a look at it. So when we look at possible cross six, again, we have two parents that can make melanin. But when we make this cross, we notice that of our offspring, some can produce melanin, but there is a small fraction that can't, that's homozygous recessive. So again, 25% are homozygous dominant, two big M's, 50% are heterozygotes, and 25% are homozygous recessive. So what that means is these homozygote recessives, 25% of them, wouldn't be able to produce melanin. They'd be albino, or golden albino depending on the parents. And in our case, they're all albinos, which gives us an indication that what we had here was two heterozygote parents, resulting in some of the offspring not being able to produce melanin like their mom and dad. So in summary, what are we seeing here? Well, again, we went through and we knew that we didn't have several of these crosses because the parents didn't match. We had, had at least one parent that couldn't make melanin, and both of ours could. We were left with these three crosses, we looked at the offspring, and we were able to eliminate these two because they produced all melanin-producing offspring. So we knew, based on all of these results, that we had to have possible cross six, where both parents produced melanin, but a fraction of the offspring did not. Okay, so now let's take a look at what would happen when we talk about GFP. So, when we talk about GFP, in this case, our parents have different characteristics. One parent can make it, the other one cannot. So our parent one can't glow, doesn't have the GFP gene, and our parent two can glow, does have it. Being able to glow is a dominant characteristic. So our parent that can't do it has two copies of the recessive allele. Whereas our parent that can do it, parent two, is either homozygous dominant or heterozygous. We can't tell by looking at her, um, looking at her. So we have to go through and look at this, the offspring. Now, first of all, we can eliminate some of the crosses just based on parents. One of our parents looks shows the recessive characteristic, one the dominant. So if we look at crosses two, three, five, and six, in those cases, either both parents show the dominant characteristic for two, three, and six, or neither show it for number five. So none of those work, because we have one showing it and one not. So we know it's either cross one or cross four. We're not sure, so let's go through and look at the offspring, see what these crosses predict, and see what matches up. For cross one, we would see a homozygote recessive parent that doesn't have GFP, and one that's homozygous dominant that does. When we cross them, in this case we get all heterozygous offspring. Um, so all have one copy of the recessive allele and one copy of the dominant. They would all have the ability to glow. Well, again, in our cross, we saw some that did not, about half. So this likely is not the cross that we're working with. Hopefully the other cross does. So let's take a look at it. So in cross four, we have a homozygote recessive and a heterozygote. In this case, half of the offspring are heterozygotes, and the other half are homozygous recessive and they would not glow. This sounds a lot more like what we had. Since our cross had some that glowed and some that didn't, this one seems to be right. Possible cross four is probably what we had. So once again, we can eliminate these three crosses because all of the parents would glow. And in our case, we didn't see that. Only one could, the other one could. We can eliminate cross five because neither parent glows under these cases. So it's either one or four. One doesn't have any offspring that can't glow, so we know it has to be possible cross four for half glow and half the not. All right, hopefully this helps, under, helps your understanding. Um, if you need help, let me know. Good luck getting this stuff done.